Um, the millennium year was a kind of very odd year for me because it was the millennium, it was the year I turned 50 and it was the year my youngest child left her for university. So suddenly I was free to do anything I wanted. Um, and I, by that time I got really very interested just in the idea of living alone um, and what it would be like to live alone in fairly extreme ways. So that's really where it started and then I moved from Northamptonshire where I was living um, to County Durham originally and then to Galloway really just looking for a place to see what it was like alone. But then I got very, very interested in it intellectually as well, and that was when I started writing the book, or thinking maybe there was a book here to write. Um, so it took about eight years, <laughs> longer than I've ever spent on anything before, except having the children, which is a slightly longer term. I think that one of the key ideas in the book is that silence is not an absence of anything. It is something. It is a something. Um, it's a something in all sorts of ways. It's something because it has a history quite separately from the history of speech or the history of language. Um, it's a something because all the people who experience it do not experience it as lack. They may find it terrifying. I mean, seriously terrifying in some cases, lethally terrifying. Or they may find it wonderful, but they don't say, oh, I shall be missing you my life this Thursday. Um, it just it doesn't seem to be the way from really very, very early, from certainly uh, the classical Greeks, nobody's experienced it, it as a nothing. And that was one of the things that really fascinated me, how we've moved ourselves into a cultural place that people think it's weird, it's dangerous, and it's silly um, or selfish that what we're meant to be doing is having relationships and, you know, being with each other. And somehow, oh yeah, I think there's, I think there's kind of cultural hole and, I think that hole has grown out of this negative sense that silence is a, either a nothing at all or a bad thing, um, or both at once, since we're all capable of thinking lots of things at once, including me. Well, quite soon after I thought that I'd be interested in silence, I thought I'd like to try a really big-ish bit of total, complete silence, because actually, if you've got to earn a living, which I have, and you, you can't really be in silence in your own house all the time. You know, the, at the very minimum, the uh, meter man comes to read the meter. Um, so I thought I'd try a rather extreme form. Uh, one way of describing it is it's like a honeymoon, actually. You fall in love with this thing and you want to kind of just be with it for a while. So I rented a little house on Sky, actually, and just was there for 40 days. But I made a big mistake because I went in second half of October and November so it was pitch dark all the time so that was that was just an error of judgment really I think that was a mistake but apart from that it was very exciting and very strange and I describe it in my book and elsewhere really as a kind of benchmark I don't think it would be possible for me and I rather doubt it would be possible for anyone actually to live in that complete isolation I mean things like I actually when looking for a house to go to, one of the criteria was that it had to have a deep freeze. But and six weeks is about as much kind of food and stuff as you can manage. I had a very nice landlady who solved the milk problem um, and her own worries about it by leaving it at the bottom of the track. But apart from that, I had no contact with anybody actually. Um, and. It has a very strange effect, it has some very strange effects on you, that kind of intensity of silence. And one of the things that I'm doing in the book, or trying to do in the book, is to compare my own personal experience of it with the experience of other people who've had very long periods of also chosen silence, because I think choosing it and not choosing it is a really radical difference. So that people do tend to experience a kind of intensity which is both physical, <laughs> In the book I talk about this extraordinary experience I had one morning when porridge started tasting wonderful, just wonderful, just very, very intense. And so things like the temperature you were and how your food tasted and how physically tired you were and how warm and cold, all those things do seem to intensify and that seems to be a very common experience. And that's a sort of bottom line experience because your emotions also seem to intensify. Um, and there are a number of other other almost physiological effects and certainly psychological effects that seem common to silence. Um, and of course, 
there's a sort of irony even talking about it, really, especially by me, because I talk so much and so fast when I'm talking. Um, but I'm not sure it's very plausible. Um, and it may be why I need such long chunks of it, because I'm not naturally good at it. Um, but this, the, sky, the sky thing was probably one of the most exciting things I've ever done in my life. And like most exciting things, a bit unnerving too. <laughs> I don't need self-justification, but it does give the book, gives my investment in it a quite extraordinarily positive feeling to be shortlisted, particularly for this prize, actually. <laughs> it kind of seems to me to fit the book in a very nice way. And also, the other people shortlisted for it are very, very good. Um, and that's particularly gratifying, because first of all, it means you don't have to be too miserable if you don't win it. And secondly, it's just, yeah, it's creditable, I feel like a grown-up. Very nice.